Okay, today we're going to have a look at the third topic of introduction to algebra, small variables. Expressions can have more than one variable, right? We will encounter very little new materials in this topic because the rules of mathematics apply to multiple variable expressions in exactly the same way as we applied them in topic 1 and 2, we have already discussed, to one variable expressions. Just as expressions can have more than one variable, so can equations. We can sometimes isolate one variable in an equation with multiple variables. For example, if we isolate x in the equation x plus 2y equals 3 by subtracting 2y from both sides, this will give us x equals 3 minus 2y, right? In algebra, we call this process solving the equation for x in terms of y. Did you get it? When you solve x in terms of other variables, you just treat other variables as constants and only treat x as an unknown variable. Do you get it? Okay. According to the concept here, let's do a quick quiz here. <clears throat> Can you evaluate each of the following when r equals 3 and s equals negative 2? Okay, have you finished? If you want to evaluate each of the following expressions, you can just insert r equals 3 and s equals negative 2 into that expression, right? So for the first one, r plus s equals r is 3, s is simply negative 2. That's 3 plus negative 2, or simply write as 3 minus 2. So this will give you 1, right? For the second one, again, 2 times rs, r is 3, of course you don't need the parentheses here, times s, s is negative 2, and this gives you 2 by 3 is 6, 6 by negative 2 is negative 12, right? And for the next expression, r equals 3, so r squared equals 3 squared, plus s squared, which means negative 2 squared, so this will give you 9 plus 4, which is 13, right? Can you follow me? Did you get it? <clears throat> Did you get this right? Okay, next one. R square is 3 square minus 3R, <clears throat> which is 3 times 3. Well, actually, you don't have to con compute the denominator, right? As long as the denominator is not zero, this will give you actually zero, right? Next one, square root of 7r is 7 by 3, minus 2 times r square times s. So 
this means 21 plus 36, which is square root of 57, right? Okay, how about the last one? <clears throat> of course, you can just insert r equals 3 and s equals negative 2, right? So that means 3 plus 2 squared plus 3 minus 2 squared, which is uh, 25 plus 1, which is 26, right? And you can also simplify the original expression first. So if you expand it, you will get r squared plus minus 2rs plus s squared, then plus r squared plus 2rs plus s squared, right? So we can cancel a neg <coughs> negative 2rs plus negative two, uh, plus 2rs. So this will give us 2r squared plus s squared. And again, this will give you the same answer, right? Because we already know r squared plus s squared equals 13. You see that? So you could do it either way. <clears throat> do you have any questions? Okay, if not, let's try it one more time, okay? And again, once you finish, please give me your answer in the chat box. Evaluate each of the following one, x equals negative 2 and y equals 6. Let's have a look at the solution together. y6 minus 2x means minus 2 times negative 2. Therefore, you will get 6 plus 4, which is 10, right? And second one is 3 times x, which is negative 2, times y, which is 6. Therefore, you will have negative 36. Next one equals <coughs> 2 times x squared is 4 times y is 6 plus x is negative 2 times y squared is 36. So well, this will give us 48 minus 72, which is 20, negative 24, right? Okay, next one, x squared is 4, y is 6, plus another 6, which is 4 over 12, which is simplified to 1 third. Next one, x is negative 2, raise the power of 6. And that's actually 2 raised to the power of 6, right? So what is 2 raised to the power of 6? That's actually 64, right? You follow me? Okay, last one. 2x is negative 4 minus y. Then 2x plus y, which is negative 10 times 2, which is negative 20, right? Did you get this correctly? Any questions? <clears throat> no? Okay, then let's have a look at another quiz. Of course, sometimes your expression could involve more than two variables, right? For example, can you evaluate each of the following? 1, a equals two o 3 over 2, b equals negative 1, and c equals 6. The message should be the same, right? Simply insert the values of each variable into the expression. Then you will have the <coughs> you can evaluate each of the following expressions, right? Again, please try this by yourself. And once you finish, please give me your answer in the chat box. Okay.
Okay, have you finished them? Jacob, have you finished? Okay, let's have a look at the solution together. First one, again, just insert each of the variables, right? So A is 3 over 2 times B, which is negative 1, plus negative 1 times C, plus C6 times A, 3 over 2. And final result is just 3 over 2, right? And B, A is 3 over 2 times negative 1 to the power of 2. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> times C, which is 6. And this gives us 9. Next one, we have 2A is 2 times 3 over 2 plus negative 1 times 6 minus 2 divided by the product of A and B and C. And eventually we'll have negative 8 over 9, right? Okay, last one. C is 3 over 2 times A is, oh, sorry, C is 6 times A is 3 over 2 raised to the power of negative 1. Okay, again, we have learned something raised to the power of negative 1 is actually the reciprocal of that number, right? So that's 2 over 3. Did you get it? And that'll give us 4. Because we can cancel a 3 here, which gives us 2 by 2, which is 4, right? <clears throat> okay, any questions? Okay. <clears throat> And we can actually use multiple variables to write expressions that express the <coughs> natural language in the mathematical language. So let's use an example to illustrate this concept here. Okay. So each sack of apples at a local store has X apples, and each sack of oranges has Y oranges. Flip buys five sacks of apples and four sacks of oranges. Karen buys two sacks of apples and one sack of oranges. Can you write an expression for the total number of pieces of fruit that Philip has and Karen has and write an expression for the total number of pieces of fruit that Philip and Karen have combined? And last question, what equation can we write by combining the first three parts? Again, I'll give you one minute to think about this question. Uh, probably two minutes, and uh, we'll have a look at the solution together, okay? <clears throat> Remember, the very first step to solve a word problem is to convert the natural language into the algebraic language.
Okay, I have you finished? Okay, let's have a look at the solution together. Okay, Philip has five sacks of apples with X apples each and four sacks of oranges with Y oranges each, right? Therefore, a total of five X plus four Y pieces of fruit that Philip has, right? And use the same method, we have two X plus Y for Karen, right? <coughs> And together they have 5 plus 2, 7 stacks of apples, and 4 plus 1 equals 5 stacks of oranges. So we can simply add these two expressions together, right? So this gives us 7x plus 5y pieces of fruit. And last question, sum of all expression from part A and B must equal the total in part C. Since both represent the same total number of pieces of fruit. So we have the equation 5x plus 4y plus 2x plus y must equal 7x plus 5y, right? They are actually the same thing. Okay, did you get it? <coughs> Any questions? Okay, next let's practice Simplify, <coughs> simplifying the multivariable expressions. So can you simplify each of the following expressions? Remember, we need to group the like terms together, right? So I'll lead you through the first one. We can combine 2x with 3x, right? So this means 5x. Then 3y minus 4y gives us negative y and minus 2, right? So this can be simplified to 5x minus y minus 2. So how about question b and c? Can you do this by yourself? Okay, how about the second one? 5x, 3x gives us, uh, plus 2x gives us 10x, right? And uh, 5y plus 3y gives us 8y, and we have 3z minus 15z, so that'll give us negative 12z, right? So that can, can be simplified to 10x plus 8y minus 12z. For the third one, we can combine 3ab with negative one half of ab, then minus ab. This gives us <coughs> actually 3ab over 2, right? And negative 4cd plus 2cd gives us negative 2cd. And then combines the constants together. Two, 3 over 2 plus 3 plus 2 gives us 13 over 2. So that can be simplified to 3ab over 2 minus 2cd plus 13 over 2, right? <coughs> Any questions? All right, then let's consider another practice. Can you use exponents to write the product 
a times b times a times a times another b. Then simplify the products in the second question. And which of the expressions below equals 2x squared to the power of 5? Then simplify the cubic root of 27, a to the power of 6 times b to the power of 3. Okay, I'll give you two minutes to think about that by yourself. And after that, we'll have a look at the solution together, okay? All right, have you finished? Okay, the first one can be simplified to just a to the power of 3, then b to the power of 2, right? Second one, if you simplify that, that's actually a product with um, constants and r's and s, right? So that can be simplified to the product of two, co two constants gives us 6, and r times r gives us r squared s to the power of 2 times s to the power of 3 gives us s to the power of 5, right? <clears throat> okay, next one, 2xy squared then together to the power of 5 gives us actually 2 to the power of 5, x to the power of 5, then y squared to the power of 5, right? So that gives us 32x to the power of 5, y to the power of 10. So c is correct. Okay, last one. We have a cubic root of something, so it's better to convert each of the expressions here to something to the power of 3, right? So that equals cubic root of 3 to the power of 3 times a to the power of 2, then to the power of 3, then b to the power of 3, right? And remember, cubic root is actually your expression inside the cubic root raised to the power of one third, right? And that gives you three to the power of three, then times one third gives you x is three, times a squared to the power of three, then to the power of one third, that's actually a squared. Then b to the power of three times one third, which is b, right? So that can be simplified to three a squared times b. Do you get it? Any questions? <clears throat> Do you have any questions? No? Okay, then let's have a look at another two questions here. Can you simplify the two expressions here? Okay, have you finished? 
Okay, let's have a look at them together. For the first one, we can cancel a common factor 3 for the two constants, right? Because 6 is 3 by 2, then we can cancel a 3 here. This leaves us a 2, right? x cancels with x here, so that leaves us y over 2z, right? <clears throat> well, second one, copy 8 there because it cannot be canceled with anything. x to the power 4 cancels with x to the power of 3 gives us an x, and y to the power of 2 with y to the power of 3 gives us a y here, right? So that gives us 8x over y. Did you get it? <clears throat> okay, next let's talk about distribution and factoring. We can also apply the distributive laws to multivariable expressions to expand or to factor the expression. For example, can you expand the product 5 times t plus 3x? <clears throat> we can use distributive laws to expand it, right? So we can distribute 5 into the parentheses. This will give us 5t plus 15s, right? And if you use distributive law to expand the second one, you will get 3x times x, which is 3x square y, minus 3xy square, right? <clears throat> And again, if you simplify the next one, t minus 2t. <clears throat> okay, pay special attention to the cases where you have a negative symbol in front of a parenthesis. So if you expand the second expression, actually you are distributing negative 1 to each of the <clears throat> terms in the parenthesis, right? So that means negative 2t negative negative gives you positive 5r then negative 1 right so that equals <coughs> negative t plus 8r minus 1 right <coughs> again the last one first distributive 3 into the parentheses will give us 3x minus 3xy plus 9, right? Then distribute 4 into the parentheses gives us negative 4x minus 4xy minus 28, and that equals negative x, negative 7xy minus 19, right? <coughs> Did you get it? And factoring is actually the reverse process of distribution. So, for example, if you want to factor this expression, that means to put the common factor 3 in front. So that gives us 3x plus 2y, right? So this process is called factoring. Again, the second one can be factorized to, <coughs> we can put 5 in front of the Parenthesis, right? So what's left in this parenthesis is just negative 3ab plus 7cd, right? How about the next one? What is the common factor? The common factor is just uh, x, right? If you put x in front of that, you will get 3x plus 2z in the parenthesis, right? And last one, <coughs> the common factor, first of all, consider the common factor of the constants, that's actually 7, right? And consider common factor of r and s, so apparently we have a r, you can put it in front, and a s square, right? So you put, if you put 7 r s square, so what's left in the parentheses are just r minus 3 s plus 2 s square, right? Did you get it? <coughs> Any questions? Okay, if you know how to exp how to expand and how to factorize, then you should be able to write a sum of two expressions, uh, two fractions, as a single fraction. How do we do this? Usually, we'll find a common denominator first, right? 
So for example, if you want to write 2 over r plus 3 over s as a single fraction, then apparently the common denominator is r times s, right? So that equals, if you convert the first term using the common denominator r times s, that's actually r times s, 2 times s, right? Plus 3 times r and uh, s times r, right? So that gives us r s is the denominator, a numerator is 2s plus 3r. Any questions? So this is how we rewrite a sum of two fractions using a common denominator. Any questions? Okay, let's see a more complex one. So this time it's your turn to write this expression as a single fraction. Okay, I'll give you one minute. And after that, we'll have a look at the solution together, okay? <clears throat> Okay, usually you'll find a common denominator. Common denominator is the least common multiple of the two denominators, right? So note that the least common multiple of 6x squared and 3xy is the least common multiple of 3 and 6 is 6. And least common multiple of x squared and x is x squared. So then consider there's another y. So least common multiple of the two denominators are, is 6x squared and y, right? <clears throat> so that can be written as 6x squared y and 5y times y minus 4 times 2x. This will give us 5y squared minus 8x over 6x squared y, right? Any questions? <clears throat> Okay, last, let's have a look at 
the equations that involves multiple variables. Again, we'll use some examples to illustrate this concept here. First, solve the equation x plus b equals c for x in terms of b and c. At the very beginning of this lesson, we have talked about this already, right? If you want to solve x in terms of b and c, just treat x as your unknown variable. Anything else, you can treat them as coefficients or constants, right? So in this case, solve for x in terms of b and c. We need to separate x and any other letters or numbers. So x is simply equals c minus b. This is our solution, right? <clears throat> you get it? OK, let's see another <clears throat> example. Solve the equation ax equals c for x in terms of a and c. Again, if you want to solve the equation for x in terms of any other letters, then just treat any other letters as constants. So in this question, it tells you that a is not 0. Therefore, we can divide both sides using c, right? Or uh, using a. So that will cancel a on the left side. That will give us x equals c over a. And this is our solution, right? Solution for x in terms of a and c. Did you get it? <clears throat> OK, another example. Solve the equation ax plus b equals c for x in terms of a, b, and c, where a is not 0. So this time, except for x, we have a, b, and c, three other letters, right? So just treat other letters as constants if you want to solve for x only. So the original equation is equivalent to ax equals c minus b, right? And because a is not 0, we can divide both sides using a. That gives us x equals c minus b over a. Again, this is our final solution, right? Did you get it? This is how we can solve for one variable in terms of other letters. Just treat anything else as constants, right? OK, then if you don't have any questions, let's consider one last example. Can you solve the equation ax plus bc equals 3c minus 2d squared x for x in terms of a, b, c, and d? So in this question, we have four other letters except for x, right? Can you solve for x in terms of a, a b, c, and d? Where a plus 2d squared is not 0. Okay, have we finished? All right, let's have a look at the solution together. Again, if you want to solve for x in terms of other letters, 
We only treat x as one unknown variable, right? We need to separate x and any other letters. So in this question, we need to move 2d square x to the left side. So ax plus 2d square x <coughs> equals 3c. At the same time, we move positive bc to the right side, so it becomes negative bc, right? Or you could also think of minus or subtract both sides using BC. Therefore, we have negative BC on the right side. The left side has no BC now. And put X in front of the parentheses because X is a common factor. X times A plus 2D squared, right? Equals 3C minus BC. There's no X on the right side. And this question, because this question tells you that a plus 2d squared is not 0, so we can divide both sides using this expression. Otherwise, if it's 0, we need to discuss different cases. And luckily, in this question, it's not 0, so we can just divide both sides using this question. So x equals 3c minus bc over a plus 2d squared, right? So this is our final solution for x. Did you get it? Do you have any questions? Okay, if not, this is pretty much about it. So, <clears throat> in this topic, we talk about more variables. Note that all the rules we have learned in the previous topics are also applicable to multivariable expressions. Okay, I'll give you the lecture notes together with the homework to or WeChat group, okay? Remember to complete your homework and submit before the deadline, which is uh, one day before the next lesson, so I can mark them, okay? All right, class is over. I'll see you next time. Bye.